Hello everyone, I am Stephen from Telecom Paris and the Polytechnic Institute of Paris. In this video, I am going to give a brief introduction to deep generative models. In this tutorial, we are going to present several computer vision methods for image and video generation or manipulation. For example, we will introduce state-of-the-art algorithms for interactive image editing or an image in or out painting. Regarding videos, we will present recent works on image animation and video stylization. All these methods are based on deep generative models that have been introduced in the last decade. The goal of this presentation is not to provide a complete review of the literature about deep generative models, but rather to briefly introduce the key methods that would be employed in most of the methods presented in this tutorial. Deep generative models is a very wide topic with many sub-problems, but in the context of this tutorial, we are going to focus mostly on the sampling problem. The sampling problem consists in learning a distribution P of X from a data set in order to sample new images. Most methods are based on the same principle. They learn a mapping function from a simple distribution, such as Gaussian, to the data distribution. This mapping function is implemented via a neural network named generator. Existing methods mostly differ by the strategy used to train this generator. Among existing methods, I am going to present generative adversarial networks, or GANs, and variational autoencoders, or VAs. Nevertheless, it's important to keep in mind that other approaches exist, such as flow-based methods or autoregressive methods. So let's start with GANs. In GANs, our generator network is trained via the use of a second network named discriminator. The goal of this discriminator is to learn to distinguish real images from fake images generated by the generator network. The two networks are trained together according to the following training objective. More precisely, during training, we alternate between updates of the discriminator and updates of the generator. When training the discriminator, we update only the discriminator parameters in order to minimize the binary cross entropy loss commonly used in binary classification problem. This minimization corresponds to maximizing this equation. When training the generator, we pr provide as input to the discriminator the generated image and maximize the probability of being a real image according to the discriminator. This maximization can be also written as this minimization problem. In the last years, Many works have proposed methods to improve the original GAN approach that I just described. Their goal is to learn models that can generate better images and that can be optimized more easily. Several works focus on improving the training loss in order to facilitate optimization. Indeed, binary cross entropy used in the original GANs uh, leads to vanishing gradient problems and optimization issues. For example, Mao et al. proposed a loss based on the least squares uh, loss that substantially improved training stability and image quality. Alternatively, the Wasserstein GAN can be used. While the original GAN, in the original GAN 3, the discriminator predicts the probability of images to be real or fake, in Wasserstein GAN, the discriminator takes the role of a critic that scores the realness or the fakeness of a given image. This change corresponds to a change in the metric used to compare the distribution of the real and the fake images. While standard GANs implicitly minimize the Janssen-Shannon divergence between the two distributions, 
the Wasserstein GAN minimizes the earth mover distance between the distribution of the real and fake samples. This mathematically motivated change leads to better optimization, better convergence, and better images. Several optimization techniques have also been uh, proposed. For example, Miyato et al. proposed to normalize the discriminator parameters uh, using a spectral norm in order to control the Lipschitz constant of the discriminator function. Their experiments show that this normalization technique is capable of generating images of better quality than previous, uh, than previous approaches. Some other approaches adopt specific regularization terms for the generator and the discriminator parameters. Finally, another easy way to increase the quality of the images generated by GAN consists in simply using class in, uh, label information. So in, in conditional GANs, in, additional, in addition to the latent variable, the generator receives as input a class label corresponding to the class of the image to generate. Similarly, we provide also the label at every image for every image that we give as input to the discriminator. And this additional information helps the generator since it can learn uh, mapping functions specific to each class instead of learning a single mapping for every class of the training uh, data set. Another research direction to improve GANs consists in focusing on the generator architecture. For example, Keras et al. Uh, proposed to train uh, a ConfNet in a progressive manner. So training starts at, the, at the very low resolution, as you can, you can see here on the, on the figure. Um, since uh, indeed it starts with a low resolution and a very simple architecture with very few layers. And this, this small, these architectures are small for both the generator and the discriminator. So after training this first very simple network, after reaching convergence, uh, we increase the dimension of the, of the two networks and we train again this network starting from the previously uh, obtained weights. And this procedure is repeated until we reach the desired resolution, the full resolution. So, uh, in this case, 1024 by 1024. So, they show in the experiment that with this progressive algorithm, they are able to, to generate images in high resolution with, uh, with a much higher quality than previous approaches. And so, more recently, Caraceta proposed a novel type of generator network named stack based architecture. So, this is uh, a different architecture. So while standard generators are composed of a single stream of convolution, as what we see here in figure A, uh, the style-based generators are based on two sub-networks, as we see here in sub-figure B. The synthesis network is in charge of generating the image. So its architecture is very similar to a standard generator, since it's composed of a sequence of convolution, normalization, and assembling layers. The second subnetwork is named mapping network. So the purpose of this network is to predict the parameters of affine transformations that are applied in every normalization layer of the synthesis network. So these parameters of the affine transformations are commonly referred to as style. So the mapping network is simply composed of fully, of fully connected layers and receive as input the uh, uh, the latent variable. So thanks to these different techniques that I just introduced, we observed in the last seven years a great improvement of the quality of the images generated by GANs. So you see here some examples uh, of the last years. So in, in addition to the um, high quality of the images generated by GANs, GANs have another interesting property. Indeed, the latent spaces learned by GANs 
are able to capture some semantic information contained in images. For example, if we sample two random images here on the first and the last rows of this figure, we can perform interpolation in the latent space and generate the corresponding images for every intermediate latent vector. We observe that the network outputs smooth transitions, where the key features of the object, such as both size, background, or class, are progressively changed uh, when we perform interpolation. So that's it about GAN. It was a quite quick overview. But now I'm going to present VAEs, that is one of the popular alternatives to GAN. So variational autoencoders are also uh, composed of two networks, an encoder and a decoder. So the decoder plays the role of the generator in GANs, in the sense that this is a network that is used at test time to generate new images. Similarly to autoencoders, VAEs are trained using a reconstruction objective. When an image X is given as input to the network, the goal is to be able to reconstruct X in, in the output of the decoder. Nevertheless, there are uh, some key differences with standard autoencoders. First, the encoder does not predict only a single latent vector Z, but uh, for an input image X, it predicts the distribution P of Z given X. Practically, um, this posterior distribution is assumed to be Gaussian, really often, and the encoder is equipped of two heads in order to predict the mean and the variance of this posterior distribution. So second, uh, thanks to this probabilistic formulation, it's possible to impose a prior a distribution on the latent space of Z, and a Gaussian prior is often chosen, and it's imposed via a callback library divergence term in the total training loss. Importantly, uh, VAEs employ a sampling step where a random latent Z is sampled according to the estimate posterior distribution P of Z given X before going through the discriminator. Interestingly, it can be shown that minimizing uh, this uh, total VAE loss uh, is equivalent to the maximization of a lower bound of the data likelihood. So when training a VAE or any other encoder-decoder architecture, the choice of the reconstruction loss is very crucial. Uh, this is this loss here in green and it's very crucial to choose a good reconstruction loss in order to be able to generate images of good quality. So naively, the VAEs can be implemented using just a simple L2 reconstruction loss, but usually it leads to a very poor image quality. So um, recently, many works I've used an alternative to the L2 reconstruction loss that is commonly referred to as perceptual loss. So in this tutorial, you, can, you will see many applications of this perceptual loss. Uh, so it's important to, to know about it. So the key idea behind this loss consists in projecting the images in the in a feature space where the Euclidean distance reflects better human judgment. So to this aim, a pre-trained uh, network, such as VGZ19, is employed. So the idea here uh, is that a pre-trained network, pre-trained for a classification task, for example, extracts features that are important to recognize objects. And therefore, uh, they carry, to some extent, some semantic information. And at least it carry more semantic information than just comparing raw pixels. And so the idea consists in computing the, the features for different intermediate layers of this network for the predicted image and for the ground truth image. And to compute the Euclidean, Euclidean distance uh, between the features. And we perform this computation for different layer J 
and in the end we average this loss over different layers. So this is a very effective way to compare images and it used in many architecture to get images that look that perceptually are similar. So in conclusion this video was a, only a very short brief introduction to deep generative models. Uh, to know more about it and get a better understanding of the different methods, I really recommend you to have a look at the references that I provide. Uh, in this video, I could present only GANs, BAEs, and the perceptual loss. But still, I'm convinced that with these key uh, basic tools, you now have all the basics required to understand uh, what is coming next in this tutorial. Thanks for watching.